Greetings and welcome to uh, our number 12 in the series uh, Our Higher Calling and uh, this time we are looking at uh, living within our means. This is a spiritual experience. It helps us to have a spiritual, a spiritual experience and so I want us to look at it and uh, I pray that uh, we will be blessed together. Welcome wherever you are and wherever you are watching from. I welcome you to the program of uh, the viewing of this time. And uh, let us pray as we start. Heavenly Father, we need the educating spirit that is in the word to teach us. So I do pray that thy marvelous things may be revealed unto us, the things that hinder us from accepting the higher calling, Lord, the idols that we cherish, we may remove them in our lives for the glory and honor of thy name. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So, this is number 12 in the series, uh, Our Higher Calling, and we are looking at... Uh, Living within our means. What does this have to do with the, our spirituality actually? Living without within our means. When you, when you look at the book of uh, Job, chapter 1, verse 21, it says that, uh, And Job opened his mouth and blessed the Lord and said that, uh, Naked I came from my mother's womb, naked I depart. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He uh, understood that, uh, the things of this world are temporal things passing away, and Christ has reminded of us in an extensive manner in the book of uh, uh, Matthew chapter 6, talking about uh, the lilies of the field and the birds of the air, and he tells us to seek ye the kingdom of God first, and uh, all its righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto us. And uh, uh, storing what we have in heaven, where the canker worms and the caterpillars and the the worms cannot, uh, the moths cannot reach and eat. When also you look at the book of uh, First Timothy chapter 6 onwards, it talks about godliness with contentment. For when, for the people loving money and the things of this world have brought unto them misery untold. And uh, we, we are then told that uh, money is the root of all evil. So, there is uh, much connection between our higher calling and living with the uh, means. And so I, I just want to pass through much of the things that uh, God is calling us to implement in our, our life. In our use of money, we can make it an uh, agent of spiritual improvement by regarding it as a sacred trust, not to be employed to administer to pride, vanity, appetite, or passion. Yes, money in our hands, we shall see what is it actually. Malachi chapter 3, 10 says that uh, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. But people, by holding everything to themselves, Actually, because of lack of contentment in their in their lives, they, they have hindered the windows of heaven being open. And you know, the bringing back of tithe and offering to the Lord is connected with the latter rain. And so, when you expend for yourself, actually, what you are just withholding in your life is the ministration of the Holy Spirit, the power of the latter rain in your lives. Let everyone of you lay by him in store as God hath prospered him. Every member, uh, of the family from the oldest down to the youngest may take part in this work of benevolence. The plan of systematic benevolence will prove a safeguard to every family against temptation to spend means for needless things, and especially will it prove a blessing to the rich by guarding them from indulging in extravagance. And so, every time we touch about faithfulness in tithes and offering and goldness and contentment, it has to do with something to do with spirituality slaying self so that you may not go 
into spend thrift into uh, impulse uh, buying the things that you don't need just for vain glory and uh, pleasing the fancy god required of his ancient people three yearly -like gatherings three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the lord thy god in the place which he shall choose in the feast of unleavened bread and in the feast of weeks and in the feast of tabernacles and they shall not appear before the lord empty every man shall give as his able according to the blessing of the lord thy god which he hath given thee no less than one third of their income was devoted to sacred and religious purposes and unlike uh, these times that you are living in not even uh, a quarter of what we are getting actually is spent on the vineyard of god that is why the places which have been not ended into a laying dormant because there is no preacher to be sent in those places because people are holding money people are withholding from god and why are they withholding from god they are withholding to use for their own satisfaction whenever god's people in any period of the world have cheerfully and willingly carried out his plan in systematic benevolence and in gifts and offerings they have realized the standing promise that prosperity should attend all their labor just in proportion as they obeyed his requirements when they acknowledge the claims of god and come blind with his requirements honoring him with their substance their bands were filled with plenty but when they robbed god in tithes and in offering they were made to realize that they were not only robbing him but themselves for he limited his blessings to them just in proportion as they limited their offerings to him and uh, when you read proverbs chapter 11 it talks about he who gives and he is um, who he who is liberal and he is expanded and he who withholdeth and then he tendeth to poverty sometimes we may think that uh, we are gratifying self by withholding and uh, uh, satisfying our personal needs when actually what we are uh, inviting is poverty in poverty in our lives so and uh, why do we have many harambes and collections on the sabbath when the people of god should be hearing the word of god and being refreshed because people have not been systematic in their benevolence and so the their offerings are praised their uh one, the, the the needs of the church are hammered in their ear so that they may be actually able to give but no one wants to give cheerfully and willing so that we may not have time wasted even on sabbath and in church services are uh, pleading with the people to give their means independent of one kind is praiseworthy to desire to bear your own weight and not to eat the bread of dependence is right it is a noble generous ambition that dictates the wish to be self supporting industrious habits and frugality are necessary <coughs> there and uh, this reminds me of the the great apostle paul that uh, he was a tent maker Yes, we are called into the vineyard to work for the Lord, but uh, we don't have to now stay and do nothing because now there is no tithes and offering, there is no help, there is no benevolence, and there is no money in the treasury to help us. We should be uh, 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 financial, financial uh, independent in everything that we do, and uh, I praise the Lord that because uh, many people have seen the need of this and are working towards it, having gardens where they can grow their crops they can grow their foods and even not only to sustain the ministry but even to help the needy in the community educate our people to get out of cities into the country where they can obtain a small piece of land and make a home for themselves and their children and when this tom 373.2 and who whoever tilleth the land proverbs say shall be blessed shall be rich shall never want and so uh one of the ways of being financially dependent and uh, educating yourself in, in a way that you can spend well is actually to go and work in the farm and after working in the farm then you you will be able to eat the toil the bread of your toil and uh, uh, it's a different way to spend what you have be, been given and different way to spend what you have got yourself you are so careful when actually you work with your hand and you get something to spend but when you are always receiving from the people it doesn't worry you how you will get it you will go here and here and get the money but this is not the way a christian people should live 
there should be a way that we should live that honors the name of the Lord. And so educate our people out of the cities and have a place where they can actually be dependent. Um, the sense of being owners of their own homes will inspire them with a strong desire for improvement. They will soon acquire skill in planning and devising for themselves. Their children will be educated to habits of industry and economy, and their intellect will be greatly strengthened. They will feel that they are men, not slaves, and will be able to regain to a great degree their lost self-respect and moral dependence. And look how this is uh, actually something to do with spiritual. We are talking about... Uh, 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 living within your means as part of higher calling in the series higher calling and uh, when people work in the garden when people learn to be self-dependent actually it helps the uh, self-respect and moral independence and then they, they are able to discern even deeper things and uh, when you are self-independent you know that you don't rely on any person to exist but God alone who can be able to bring rain, to bring sunshine, and bring whatever uh, that is helpful and needful for you to have your self-independence. Uh, Be determined never to incur another debt. Deny yourself a thousand things rather than run in debt. This has been the curse of your life, getting into debt. Avoid it as you'll uh, the smallpox. Adventist Home 393.4 Many people are dying under the burden of debt. And why are they in debt? They can't live within their means. Yes, we, we have some people who have really been pressed to the wall until they have gone into maybe borrowing something for their family to feed on. But this incurring of debts, we are told even in the Bible that um, all man nothing in Romans chapter 12, Romans chapter 13, all man nothing except the debt of loving. We are to die a debt-free people. We are to rest a debt-free people. Proverbs 22, 7, The rich ruleth over the poor, and the borrower is the servant to the lender. When actually you be a man who depends on begging and requiring of the people to sustain you, you become handcuffed. You become handcuffed in your life. It means that you are always under these people. They rule over you. The rich ruleth over the poor. And many people have found themselves, they even can't uh, worship God in their clear conscience. They, have, they can't make a point which is uh, different from other people because these are the people whom they depend on and their fear actually uh, aggravating them or uh, displeasing them lest they do not receive the help from these people. And so... This is one of the things that have brought us down spiritually. And when you are in such a status, you can't read the scriptures for yourself. You have just to nod your head when somebody says something. Because, you know, if you go against this person, actually they will not help you. And so it brings you down spiritually. It helps you not be a teacher of truth, but a teacher of falsehood. Because you want to maintain the receiving from these people. It's like uh, you are hired for a lie and this is what God wants us to come out so that we may respond to a higher calling make a solemn covenant with God that by his blessing you will pay your debts and then owe no man anything if you live on porridge and bread and I'm thankful of this it is so easy in preparing your table to throw out of your pocket 25 cents for extras take care of the pennies and the dollars will take care of themselves it is the mites here and the mites there that are spend for this that and the other that soon run up into dollars deny self at least while you are walled in with debt do not falter be discouraged or turn back deny your taste deny the indulgence of appetite save your pens and pay your debts work them off as fast as possible when you can stand forth a free man again or no man anything you will have achieved a great victory so staying out of a debt is something that will give you a peaceful mind so that even you may uh, comprehend the spiritual thing and you may be able to listen to the Spirit of God speak to you. You, you see like um, the people who have taken loans, the students and all that, they are not at peace. The government is upon them, they have to pay, the interest are increasing, they do not have jobs. And so all this accumulation of things will never give you peace even to have with your Lord you are just looking over your shoulder every now and then. 
When will I be called upon? When will I be arrested? When I, will I get money so that I may pay the debt that I'm having? This is not the kind of the life that God has called us to live. God has called us to live a free life. And he says that if the Son of Man sets you free, you shall be free indeed. You ought to be careful that your expense do not exceed your income. Bind about your wants. Be careful, exceedingly careful, that your expenses do not exceed your income. Live within your income. Many, very many have not so educated themselves that they can keep their expenditures within the limit of their income. They do not learn to adapt themselves to circumstances, and they borrow and borrow again and again, and became overwhelmed in debt, and consequently they become discouraged and disheartened. Adventist homepage 304. 74 paragraph 2 why should you bring sorrow upon your family why should you bring sorrow upon the children you have incurred debt until now you don't have peace with your wife you don't have peace with your children you don't have peace with the community when you look when you meet you you have to meet some people you have to hide because you owe them some sin when you you can't even go to church because you have borrowed from everyone until you, even if people are not suspecting you, you suspect yourself. This is not the life that we should be living. The Lord has been pleased to present before me the evils which result from spending thrift habits, that I might, I might admonish parents uh, to teach their children strict economy, teach them that money spent for that which they do not need is perverted from it is proper use. And you know, we shall be held accountable before the Lord. How? we use our money. There should be a strict economy. One of, one of the prerequisites of uh, marriage is a partner who is able to stay within economy and not to nudge and hurt the husband or the wife that this is this and this is that. If you have extravagant habits, cut them away from your life at once. Unless you do this, you will be bankrupt for eternity. Not only bankrupt uh, financially, but you will be bankrupt morally and spiritually. Habits of economy, industry, and sobriety are a better portion for your children than a rich dowry. Do not educate your children to think that your love for them must be expressed by indulgence of their appetite, pride, extravagance, and love of display. There is no time now to invent ways for using up money. Use your inventive faculties in seeking to economize. And when you economize, you extend your hand to the needs of Isaiah chapter 58, which brings about the loud cry. But because people are so uh, stringent in their ways, they are so miser, they are so spendthrift, and uh, they indulge in uh, impulse buying, the, the, the needy, the true religion of James 1.27, is not manifested among the people because they are, they are thinking of self. They, they still have this disease that Satan had, I and I. Habits of self-indulgence or a want of tact and skill on the part of the wife and the mother may be a constant drain upon the treasury, and yet that mother may think she is doing her best because she has never been taught to restrict her wants or the wants of her children and has never acquired skill and tact in household matters. Hence, one family may require for it is support twice the amount that will suffice for another family of the same size. We find that one family is spending literally what even three families can spend and be satisfied. Why? Habits of self-indulgence. We are talking about living with your means. This is in the series, Our Higher Calling. Watch the little outgoes in order to avoid the larger leaks. Needless expenses are constantly brought about in your family management. Your wife loves to see her children dress in a manner beyond their means. And because of these, tastes and habits are cultivated in your children, which will make vain and proud. If you will learn the lesson of economy and see the peril to yourselves and to your children and to the cause of God in this free use of means, you will obtain an experience essential to the perfection of your Christian character. And so, living with, within your means has something to do with character perfection because it removes pride and vain glory. It removes looking at self and turn your eyes to Jesus. When you have to support others, when you have to cut loose and sacrifice what you need and be able to assist others, it helps in Christian perfection. 
and even we are told that Christian perfection is made complete when there is an impulse of helping others, ministry of healing. And we are told in Christ Object Lesson that actually the poor shall not cease to be among us, and this is one of the ways that God ordained for character uh, perfection and complete completeness. We are pilgrims and strangers on the earth. Let us not spend our means in gratifying desires that God will have us repress. Let us fitly represent our faith by restricting our wants. Let us not be dwellers on this earth. Let us be a people who understand that we are here but on probation. You should learn to know when to spare and when to spend. You should reckon all the little spend in self-gratification. You should notice what is used simply to gratify taste and in cultivating a perverted Epicurean appetite. The money expended for useless delicacies may be used to add, add to your substantial home comforts and conveniences. You are not to be penurious. You are to be honest with yourself and your brethren. Penuriousness is an abuse of God's bounties. Lavishness is also an abuse. The little outgoes that you think of as not worth mentioning amount to considerable in the end. And uh, even Say for example, in our airtime, in our bundles, when actually we load our phones and we use it for the things that are not ennobling to God, these are penuriousness and lavishness. And uh, if the pennies could be, have been used to further the gospel rather than just Facebook doing nothing, it could have been much better. You, you find that people are spending a lot on Facebook. People are spending a lot on emails. But these things that they are spending on... They are not generating money. They are not for gospel purposes, but just to please the eyes and to please the ears. Brothers and sisters, living within your means, and not only living with your means, but sacrificing for the cause of God is what we have been called in this higher calling. We have to spare, and we have to know when to spend. Parents are to bring up and educate and train their children in habits of self-control and self-denial. They are ever to keep before them their obligation to obey the word of God and to live for the purpose of serving Jesus. They are to educate their children that there is need of living in accordance with simple habits in their daily life and to avoid expensive dress, expensive diet, expensive houses, and expensive furniture. Children can be taught simplicity that doesn't tend to point you to poverty, but um, simplicity that actually uh, glorifies as God. He doesn't say that um, now when you are modesty, you walk around naked and you walk around in filthiness, but you can still spend less and be much attractive, be much comfortable, and be much healthy. It is about living for others. Jesus lived to bless others. We should also live to bless others. Dollars slip from your pocket very easily. Self denial is a lesson which you both have yet to learn. This is telling uh, 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 a letter to the uh, to couples. Yes. God is not honored when the body is neglected or abused and is thus unfitted for his service. To care for the body by providing for it food that is re releasable and strengthening is one of the first duties of the household. It is far better to have less expensive clothing and furniture than to stint the supply of the food, and you find that people are eating so badly, but much is being expended on outward adornment, and then they are unfitted for the service of God. Our economy must never be of that kind which will lead to providing meager meals. Students should have an abundance of wholesome food, but let those in charge of the cooking gather up the fragment that nothing be lost. And even in preparing this wholesome food, Jesus Christ, when he had provided food for the 4,000 and 5,000, he gathered the fragment. Let us not be wasteful. We are talking about living within your means in the series, Our Higher Calling. God does not require that his people should deprive themselves that which is really necessary for their health and comfort, but he does not approve of wantonness and extravagance and display. Brothers, his family live in accordance with the principles of trickiest economy. Brother, he had conscientiously decided not to build a co Convenient woodshed and kitchen for his large family because he did not feel free to invest means in personal convenience. This when the cause of God needed money to carry it forward. I tried to show him that it was necessary for the health as well as the morals of his children that he should make home 
pleasant and provide convenience to lighten the labor of his wife. And so even in uh, in in the whole issue, we, we should balance everything between family and the work of the Lord. If we can provide for the Lord, let us do it. If we can provide for family, let us do it. All should learn how to keep accounts. Some neglect this work as an essential, but this is wrong. All expenses should be accurately stated. And this is something that people have drifted from doing. They just receive money and spend it, receive money and spend it, and when the accounting is uh, uh, is asked for, there is no record that can be brought. This this is poor bookkeeping. This is poor way of spending your life. Christ once gave his disciples a lesson upon economy, which is worth of careful attention. He wrote a miracle to feed the hungry thousands who had listened to his teachings, yet after all had eaten and were satisfied, he did not permit the fragments to be wasted. He who, he who could, in their necessity, feed the vast multitude by his divine power, bade his disciples gather up the fragments, that nothing may be lost. This lesson was given as much for our benefit as for those living in Christ's day. The Son of God has a care for the necessities of temporal life. He did not neglect the broken fragments after the feast, although he could make such a feast whenever he chose. The lessons of Jesus Christ are to be carried into every phase of practical life. Economies be practiced in all things, gather up the fragments that nothing be lost. There is a religion that does not touch the heart and therefore becomes a form of wealth. If it is not brought into practical life, religious duty and the highest human prudence in business lines must be commingled. And so, living within our means is one of the ways for us to develop a Christian character, as we are saying, to respond to our higher calling. It will make us think of God more than we think of ourselves. The Lord will have his people thoughtful and caretaking. He will have them study economy in everything and waste nothing. The amount daily spent in needless things with the thought, it is only a nickel, it is only a dime, seems very little. But multiply this little bus by the days of the year, and as the years go by, the array of figures will seem almost incredible. I wouldn't even dare do this for now. I, I say many, and we repent of this. Just the one shilling you spend, if you account it for an year, you'll find you could have saved even 30 US dollars. You could have saved 3,000 shillings, but none will have Think about that. A daily example, I will not infringe you to hold up means. It will be difficult for you to do this. But I will counsel you both to expend your money carefully and let your daily examples teach lessons of frugality, self-denial, and economy to your children. They need to be educated by precept and example. And the things that we do, the children copy it. And they grow up thinking the only thing they can do is spend and spend and nothing else. And what are they spending on? They are spending on themselves. Those who do not live for self will not use up every dollar meeting their supposed ones and supplying their convenience, but will bear in mind that they are Christ followers and that there are others who are in need of food and clothing. And we are told that much is expended on dress. If all women could give an account of their dress, the wardrobes, the, 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 the whole wardrobe will be able to feed the hungry in this world and to end the hunger problem. And so much is spent on these vain things and people are suffering somewhere. When I was only 12 years, I knew that it was, I knew what it was to economize. With my sister, I learned a trade and although we would earn only 25 cents a day, from this sum we were able to save a little to give to missions. We saved little by little until we had $30. Then when the message of the Lord soon coming came to us, with the call of men and means, we felt it a privilege to hand over the $30 to Father, asking him to invest it in trucks and pamphlets to send the message to those who were in darkness. With that money we had earned at our trade, my sister and I provided ourselves with clothes. We would hand our money to Mother, saying, Buy so that, after we have paid for our clothing, there will be something left to give for missionary work, and she will do this, thus encouraging in us a missionary spirit. Where are children, wives, and husbands and men and women who are ready to subsist on what they can subsist on and what is left they engage in 
printing missionary tract as this uh, uh, prophetess did when she was so young. Many things that the most important thing they can do is go to the big crusades, big audiences and preach. No, you can reach to the people where they are within your gates with a, just a tract that has even 10 lines you can print and uh, be able to spread the second coming of Jesus Christ. But self-denial is something that is not known by many. We are told that experimental religion is known but, a, but by a few. A shaking must take place to purify the church. That is um, in the spiritual gifts, volume 2. Saving money. Oh, how much money we waste on useless articles in the house, on raffles and fancy dress, and on candies and other articles we do not need. Parents, teach your children that it is wrong to use God's money in self-gratification. Encourage them to save their pennies wherever possible to be used in missionary work. They will gain rich experience through the practice of self-denial. And such lessons will often keep them from acquiring habits of intemperance. So it's all about intemperance. It's about self-denial. It's about thinking of others. It is a practical knowledge of truth. Living within our means, it's not just economizing and holding, but actually being with a liberal hand unto others. Money is not necessarily a curse. It is of high value. Because if rightly appropriated, it can do good in the salvation of souls, in blessing others who are poorer than ourselves. By an improved, by an improvident or unwise use, money will become a snare to the user. He who employs money to gratify pride and ambition make it a curse rather than a blessing. Money is a constant test of the affections. Whoever acquires more than sufficient for these real needs should seek wisdom and grace to know his own heart and to keep his heart diligent, lest he have imaginary ones and become an unfaithful steward, using with prodigality his lord's entrusted capital. When we love God supremely, temporal things will occupy their right place in affection. If we humble and honestly seek for the knowledge and ability in order to make right use of our Lord's goods, we shall receive wisdom from uh, above. I pray that uh, the Lord may bless you and the Lord may keep you and we may come to an understanding that actually it is not about, um, uh, it's not about us. Christ who was rich in everything, left everything in heaven to come and die for us. By living within our means, not being spendthrift, thrift, and uh, saving so that we may prosper the cause of the Lord. This is something that has a blessing. This is something that will tend to the latter rain. We need a latter rain. How can we make it happen? The Lord said, try me and see if not I will open the windows of heaven. And if not, the harvest will overtake the other harvest. And so I pray that the Lord may give us the power and God may enable us to walk in his will, even in such a time as this, when means are needed for doing the work of the Lord. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you and we glorify your name for this lesson. And I pray that uh, as simple as it has been, it may be of benefit to our lives and we may set our eyes and look unto Jesus Christ, the author of finish of our life, um, uh, expecting from him a blessing and expecting him to instruct us in the righteous ways in these last days. Be magnified, for in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.